So there's been four groups, you all know that. This is three of them. You're going to hear what the groups have come up with. In my class today, what's going to happen is the students have been in groups working on different tasks, uh, scale difficulty in each group. They're going to hear what all the others have been doing. This all comes together for where the students will go next. Now what you're going to see early on is you're, a couple of our uh, seniors, or what I, I've been called the system engineers, they're going to actually drive the vendor software that was installed in these 11 high schools. and. We're the only ones that have access to this. They've given us specific uh, a window into the system. So they're being informed on other pieces of a common problem that they'll be solving. The problem deals specifically with uh, solar power as an application to programming, and they're programming in a brand new programming language. The very end, uh, we've got a couple of students that are gonna take a program and show you what you're gonna have for starter code. They're gonna show you code that works. The language they're programming in is something called Swift. All of your iPhone apps are written in Swift. The newest Mac operating system is written in Swift. These kids are learning how to program in Swift. Because it's new. We haven't done file operations yet. We will. But you'll, you'll see it. So I want that to happen too. Now the way we're going to do this is I'm going to have Keyshawn or Jacob uh, drive the software, the vendor, the industrial software. They're going to create a couple files and then you'll take a uh, the monthly file and open it up and that's where the environmental information is and your PowerPoint's up here, all their PowerPoints are up here. By design, this course has uh, students of uh, scaled uh, competence in programming already. Some have programmed before, some are going to learn a program now, some have never programmed. All right, so um, as you guys know, we've been working on the Draker software. It's a system where we can look at um, throughout a variety of high schools and their solar panels and um, what they're outputting, what kind of power output they're getting versus um, the potential they have to get, so on and so forth. So as you see here... I tend to give them all the same problem initially, uh, give them some, for instance, starter code. But the, the main thing to do once they all have their individual tasks is uh, let them go into that area of struggle. They have to go in there. And so don't leave them in there to drown, but bring them in there and explain to them, okay, we're debugging a program right now. That's gonna be a little bit hectic. It's something you gotta get a little skill at, but let me work with you on it. Uh, especially in, in a scenario where some kids know more than others, they're even reluctant to tell you, I don't know how to do this. And so that's where how you ask the question can make a difference. What do y'all think had happened on that spike there? See that spike on that, uh, that trailing edge? What was going on the first? What was going on there, do you think? Why did the uh, power of production go down in there? What was going on there? Was or Some environmental, probably, okay? What about that gap in between the two? What's going on there? You don't get any solar power at night. Not everybody knows that. Okay. <laughs> For instance, don't um, make them so yeah, feel challenged for not knowing something. I would say, uh, for instance, I may not have been, I'm not sure I was clear about that. I'm not sure I got that across. So what can I do here? What can we do here? Well, you'll see in here three environmental, the last three columns. That's environmental stuff. Okay, nitrous oxides, and you're going to hear about that. Uh, silicon dioxide, and I think we've got CO2, column D. So uh, Jacob's taken AP Environmental Science and uh, was particularly interested in this. So he's going to talk about that. How do I help the students recognize the difference between effort, challenge, and higher levels of achievement? So, uh, as they showed you guys, you can see in the last three columns of that file that they generated are uh, the nitrous oxides, the sulfur dioxide, and the carbon dioxide. Modeling so it certainly helps a lot. Uh, not doing it all at once helps a lot. For instance, in programming, I'll give them a code, a program that largely works and have them operate it, but then in the front of it, I'll have a series of explorations, they're called, where they'll start adding content and wanted a, a unit at a time, debugging and figuring out what didn't work or what did work. As the school year progresses, I do less and less starter code for them and more and more, they're writing from scratch. So giving something that largely works, and then let them add to it and even explain it to each other. That's where a lot of good education happens, where the kids are explaining something to each other. So, How do I recognize when the kids are emotionally challenged and, and where do we go from here? 
We've got AC versus DC power, and so obviously, like it says on the slide, everything that you normally use, like light bulbs, uses AC power, but the power that's coming out of the solar panels is DC power, so you need a something called an inverter to convert between that. First of all, in programming, you can see it happen. I mean, there's all sorts of body language. It may be shutting down. It may be uh, nobody throws a computer across the room, but you can see it happening. So what do we do there? Well, you try and draw them along, get them started. Say, well, try this. Uh, for instance, it, uh, this might be the cause. Let them ask the student next to them uh, for help. Uh, and also recognize where it's a, now at a point where I just need to tell them what to do. They're stuck, they're not getting past this. Let me say, well, do this and then move on. But I can't create a dependency relationship either there. There's going to be a certain amount of academic tension naturally when we're trying to challenge kids. And so let them know that that happens. It's okay. Uh, a safe environment, I would say, is the best way uh, to get to where we're all trying to go to help set up a safe environment for the kids to learn. One of the things is uh, let them know that uh, learning doesn't have to have a, a cost to it, but let them know along the way that this is the time where it's okay to be wrong. Um, my group was a chemistry group and we went over like the reason solar power creates heat and how it works. That's how we learn. That's some of the best engineering happens when you're trying to fix something that you thought would work and didn't. And so it is with programs, so it is with academia too. So let the kids know it's okay. Laugh about it a little bit, not to trivialize it, but let the kids know it's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. To generate energy from sunlight.